Hey guys, it's me, Dr. Jake, and today we are going to talk about the most dangerous challenges on RuPaul's Drag Race. That's right, I'm weaponizing my MD. It seems like every season, the bar to impress the judges rises higher and higher. And in recent seasons, there have been several injuries, some of which have made it so that queens have to leave the show. And those rising standards of spectacle might be causing some of these injuries. Maybe it's the queens doing more to impress, and maybe it's production spurring them to do more and more risky challenges. I'm not sure, but let's take a look at the most dangerous challenges of RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm only going to be covering the US and All-Star seasons because I don't want this video to be three hours long. And there are also a lot of repeats on international seasons, so if I see something that was done in an international season as well, I'll comment on it. And we're only going to talk about the maxi challenges in this video. If you want to hear about the mini challenges, leave me a comment. Let me know. But if a maxi challenge is the same as a mini challenge, we'll talk about it. And Drag Race fans, I know you have so much trouble expressing your feelings online, so I'm going to open this space up for you to tell me I'm wrong. Leave a comment and make sure to put some extra hate in there. <laughs> Let me just first explain my categories. The first is Uncle Went Cleek, which means we've already had an injury, so we know that the challenge is dangerous. The second is could literally die, and I don't mean literally, I mean literally like it's used in the Merriam-Webster dictionary, so not literally. In other words, I feel like there's a pretty significant risk of an injury that could take the contestant out of the competition. So the uncle didn't go click yet, but I think there's a good chance that it will. The next category is tis but a flesh wound, which basically means I think there's a risk of some small injuries, but nothing that would put them out of commission, just something that would be an annoying type of injury. For example, a scrape or a bruise. And the final category is ego bruising only, and that one just means that I don't think there's a risk of any injury beyond just, like, living. You could get injured anytime, any place. This challenge doesn't change that risk based on what you have to do to complete it. Let's start by talking about design challenges, the very first challenge on RuPaul's Drag Race, and I'm going to lump the ball in there because they always have to make an outfit for it anyway. You might be thinking, how could a design challenge be dangerous? But the answer lies in how the episode usually starts. They make the queens fight over materials. Now, in recent seasons, they're not forcing the queens to do that. They're just providing them with boxes that have a bunch of pre-selected materials, which introduces some riggery, but I'd rather have some riggery with some uneven material quality than have the queens get hurt. So that's overall a positive. But what has actually caused some minor injuries in this challenge is the type of materials they use. UK season two had Tace using this sort of copper wire stuff that cut into her hand. Not great, but she didn't have to leave the show. So I'm going to put this into the tis but a flesh wound category. Oh, maybe I forgot to mention, they also get like burned on hot glue guns and they poke themselves with sewing needles. So yeah. And the next unique challenge from season one is the girl group challenge. Pretty minimal risk of injury, but the stunts have gotten bigger. Splits, kicks, dips, death drops. So I'm going to put this in the tis but a flesh wound category. I also gotta say, it seems safer to me when the queens are making their own choreography because they can choreograph to their ability, and because all of the other queens of their peers, they're free to object if something is outside of their skill level and they might get injured doing it. The next season one challenge we need to talk about is the branding challenge. This carries pretty minimal risk. They literally just like make a commercial. So this has to be in the ego bruising only category. Honestly, if you manage to injure yourself making a commercial, that is... Wow. The next season one challenge is the makeover challenge. And I think there's pretty minimal risk here. They make them do a dance number, but I think the queens are choreographing for people that are less skilled than they are because most of the guests getting made over aren't dancers. The main risk here is just bad makeup which could, I guess, cause a little bit of ego bruising. If you personally know anyone who's been killed by bad makeup, please let me know in the comments. The final season one challenge we have to talk about is the music video bitch track challenge. You might think that this carries the same risk as the girl group challenge, but as I alluded to before, the queens are not choreographing their own dances in the bitch track number. The professional choreographers might push the queens to do stunts they're not comfortable with, which could lead to injury. And because the choreographer is basically a boss, it's hard to object and say, I have a problem because you want to do well in the show. And if you need an example, look no further than All Stars 3, because Bibi Zahara Benet just couldn't do this move or she 
Bibia to jump into the other dancer's arms. I bet if Bibia had had her choice, she would have choreographed a number that she could have done perfectly. She's done fierce choreography before. So I think this one also goes into the tis but a flesh wound category. Moving on to season two, the first new challenge we have to talk about is the acting challenge. I guess there are some minor stunts in some of the acting challenges, but these are relatively safe. I mean, Silky even got a stunt double in Canada versus the world. So this goes into the ego bruising only category. And the next new season two challenge is the stripper challenge, which I'm going to lump in with all dance challenges. I guess they also had to sell cherry pies on the street for some reason, but if you or someone you know has ever been injured in a bake sale, let me know in the comments. I don't think we're going to get any takers on that one. The queens in these challenges often do a ton of stunts, and they also often have outside choreographers, which means they'll be pushed to go outside of their abilities. So even though most of them would only cause minor injury, these are going to go into the could literally die category. But yeah, the dance world is full of catastrophic injuries that are career enders. And I guess if you like hit your head and had a head bleed or something, you could literally die. Like actually literally. But I think the risk here is like an ankle twist or a knee injury. And honestly, I think it's just a matter of time. Next up is one of my favorite challenges, the snatch game. And barring Snooky wanna smush mush, I think this one's pretty safe. Ego bruising only. And the final new challenge of Drag Race Season 2 is live singing. The risks here seem pretty minimal. The only thing I can think of is like vocal nodules, some sort of vocal injury. But those take like months to years to develop, so I don't think so. And that brings us into season three. The first challenge we need to talk about from season three is the exercise video, totally leotarded. They've done this now twice. The second one was Dragaton in UK3. And RuPaul kind of stole my thunder here. Hold, hold on a second. Safety first, people. We don't want anybody to get hurt. It's just feeling a little disorganized. Rue's concern is pretty warranted. Tying someone up can cause asphyxiation. If you trip over a jump rope because you're tied up with it, you could break some bones. And I think that's the reason that they made Dragaton more of a choreographed number rather than letting the queens do their own thing. So this one goes into the could literally die category. But I do think that eating chicken while shaking your beautiful body is pretty safe. Eat that chicken, you bitch. The next new challenge of season three is the newsroom challenge, one of my favorites, which I am saying pretty much about every challenge at this point. But in any case, teleprompter related injury is pretty rare, so this one goes into ego bruising only. The final new challenge in season three is the stand-up challenge, which I'm going to lump in with award shows and roasts as well. There's really no risk to these. You're just talking on a stage into a mic. Your ego can get bruised if you tell terrible jokes. Oh, look, a rhinestone. Now, season four is where this list gets interesting, because the first new challenge that we have to talk about is the WTF, World's Trashiest Fighters, the Wrestling Challenge. And you may notice that Madame LaQueer's iconic confessional is one of my categories. My ankle goes click. And because her uncle went click, this of course goes into the uncle went click category. Are you shocked? You seem shocked. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. I'm trolling you a little bit. It actually goes into the could literally die category because she hurt her ankle before the show. But I had to have a little fun with you. Love ya. It's interesting that they never did this challenge again after season four. I think they were just scared of losing one of their front runners to an injury, and that would ruin their entire storyline on the season. Think of cornbread. And as an aside, I want to remind you of another one of Madame LaQueer's iconic confessional moments where she said, subscribe to the channel and like the video. Okay, moving on. And the second new challenge from season four is the debate challenge, which basically just holds a risk of confusion. Unless one of the queens punches someone else in the face for being obnoxious, this one's pretty safe. Ego bruising only. Look over there! The next season that aired was All Stars 1. There was only one new challenge on this season, queens behaving badly, where they had to go out onto the street and force people to do shit. And I don't think any of the queens are at risk of injury, but that guy who had shaving cream sprayed down his pants might get a yeast infection. They love warm and moist places. So I'm going to say the risk of this challenge is ego bruising only. And on to season five, where we have our very first lip syncing challenge, which is lip syncing to the spoken word. We'll talk about lip syncing to music later, but this one is going to go into the ego bruising only category. Not much risk to lip syncing a monologue. The next challenge 
challenge is the recorded singing challenge, and this also carries little risk. Ego bruising only. Season 6 had two new challenges we have to talk about, and the first is the talk show. The real risk is that the queens might ask dumb questions of the guests. And by the way, rest in power, Georgia Holt. I love her. In any case, ego bruising only for both the guests and the queens. And the second new challenge in season six is the rusical, originally with live singing, but then they started recording it and letting the queens lip sync. There's often some dance on the rusical, but the focus is usually on the lip syncs. So there's some risk, but it's pretty minimal. Tis but a flesh wound. There were no new challenges in All-Star 7, but All-Stars 2 brought the talent show. The talent show in season 15 was actually what motivated me to make this video. Production doesn't force the queens to do any stunts, but the queens do it anyway because they want to impress, they want to be in the top. The All-Stars 3 talent show is where things really ramped up. Aja jumped off of the box and Kennedy jumped onto the box. Obviously jumping off of a box is much more dangerous because gravity can cause an injury. But I do think the goopery and gaggery has elevated since then. We have tons of people doing splits, we have someone breaking wood with her hand, and granted she's a taekwondo expert, so I assume that was pretty safe for her. We have Jax doing gymnastics, and gymnastics causes a ton of injuries. So the talent show goes into the could literally die category. I'm happy to see these acts, like I want the queens to create impressive TV that wows me, but I think you can do that without putting yourself in danger. I think Tatiana's spoken word performance is the best example of that. And her act has withstood the test of time. It's still iconic today. You don't have to stunt to impress the judges, although I understand why they do it. So yeah, could literally die. I think it's just a matter of time. Season 8 didn't have any new challenges, but Season 9 brought us both the cheerleading challenge and our first queen going home because of an injury. Eureka's uncle went click in the challenge, and it's not that surprising. When you ask a bunch of queens who aren't trained in gymnastics to tumble, like, something's gonna go wrong. And unfortunately, Eureka was the sacrifice here. I doubt they're gonna explore this challenge again based on what happened. The uncle went click. Season 9 gave us our first improv challenge, and while I thought this was going to be a clear-cut ego bruising only, there is some nuance to this. And the first bit of nuance is that I was wrong, and it was season 10. If you remember the improv challenge in season 11, Plastique Tiara did a huge split in the middle of it, and then she and Vanjie licked some milk off the ground, which could make you kind of sick, right? I mean, that was kind of... Odd. I guess they weren't really licking it, they were just pretending to lick it. But in any case, I do think this still belongs in the ego bruising only category. I think it's just on the border of Tis But a Flesh Wound. With all the stunting and how that's increasing on the show, things could go worse. And the final new challenge that Season 9 gave us was lip syncing to music. Now listen, I know what you're gonna say. Technically, the lip sync for the crown is not a maxi challenge, but it kinda is, right? It's literally the challenge in the final episode. It's become rigged as hell, but still, it is a challenge, right? And we have the lip sync Lala Perusa as well. And while lip syncing is definitely a low risk challenge, it's definitely gotten more intense of late. Remember, in All Star 6, Laganja jumped from like 10 feet in the air into a split as part of a lip sync. I know it wasn't technically part of her lip sync, but it was right before the lip sync and is probably part of the reason that she won. That could cause serious injury, so this has been elevated from its initial iterations to the could literally die category. Wait, wait, wait! No! Actually, no, this is in the uncle went click category because Victoria Scon actually broke her knee when she was doing a lip sync in UK Series 3. Oh my god, how could I forget that? Oh, that's like literally what this video is about. I'm the worst. Stan the scone. Next, we go into All-Stars 4, and that just had one new challenge, the design a room challenge. And I think unless you inhale paint fumes or something, this is really not a risky challenge. It's ego bruising only. And the final existing challenge that we have to talk about are the drag con panels. Again, really only a risk of ego bruising. Not too concerned about that one. But I want to take this part of the video to name some new challenges that they could do that might be really funny and entertaining, but wouldn't put the queens at any risk. 
And my first idea is an ASMR challenge. And I got this idea from World of Wonder themselves. They have an ASMR Queen series. It's hosted by Derek Barry and Nebraska Thunderfuck, and it's pretty funny. Another challenge I would love to see is a baking challenge. Make the queens do a nailed it style challenge and make the food like a teensy tiny part of the judging. They already had Salmonella and Laguna Blue on Nailed It, and Nicole Byer is a freaking guest judge all the time. So just do that on this show. Just like call it Rue Nailed It or something. It can be literally whatever pun they want. People will eat it up. Oh, and for the ASMR challenge, call it Rue SMR. That makes sense, right? Wait, I had a third challenge. It was one that would like favor the older queens. Make them tell time on a clock with hands. Sorry, Zoomers, this challenge is not for you. Oh, I know what I wanted. I want a synchronized swimming challenge. I think that would be amazing. And what I love about it is it would put the bigger girls on the exact same platform as the smaller ones because anyone can swim. I guess the only concern is that you might have drag queens who don't know how to swim, but they could screen for that in the casting process, right? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, they could call it synchronized swimming. I'm a genius. World of Wonder, if you're hiring, I'm right here. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit that like button so this video can spread to more people like cancer. See, that's my MD talking right there. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. Can I get a can I get an amen? Can I get a can I get an amen? Can I get a can I get an amen? Okay, bye now.